A couple of days ago, I received my Flex Radio 8600 and I decided to do an unboxing video when I received it. And now I decided to do a brief overview of the uh, features and what to expect if you decide to get one for yourself. So uh, here we go. So I am literally going to be doing this uh, real life, so um, I have not seen what's in this box, I just opened it. And it comes in the same size box as the uh, 6600 came in. So it comes with a full color, uh, maybe not full, but a little color uh, quick start guide, which is nice. And uh, in addition, there is also a little support uh, printout in case you need to get some help with getting started with the unit. So that was a nice little addition. Also, I see there are a couple of little marketing stickers or one sticker rather and a coaster. And I also see uh, the usual microphone. I think this is the same microphone that's included with the uh, 6600, if I'm not mistaken. And I will probably not be using this at all since I usually use the uh, Radio Sport headset. So this uh, will probably go back in the drawer for now. And finally, here is the actual unit. Uh, other than the number, it looks very similar or maybe even identical, at least in the front, to the 6600. And it's pretty lightweight, uh, which is nice. Um, and let's see the back. The side has vent holes, as uh, did the other one, the uh, 6600, which I had previously. And uh, here is the back. So the uh, back is also very similar. I will uh, go over uh, the uh, back uh, ports in more detail uh, in about a minute. The unit also comes with a GPS antenna, power, and Ethernet cable, of course. The uh, receiver is 100 watts, all mode, all band, and you can read all the specs on flexradio.com. There's actually quite a bit uh, that um, is covered on the website as far as specifications, and it's worth looking at. The receiver itself has four independent uh, band mode receivers and excellent specs, again, all on flexradio.com. Transmitter covers 160 meters through 6 meters and uh, has a 100 watt output except for AM, which is only 25 watt. And transverter ports are two. There's also two receive ports. For those who are using a magnetic loop antenna, for example, this is a perfect addition. There is an integrated automatic antenna tuner and actually works really well. However, if you're using an amplifier like I am, you usually want to keep that disabled and use an external antenna tuner if needed. The modes it covers are obviously a single sideband CW, AM, a couple of other modes that people might be uh, using. FM obviously on 6 and 10 meters is available as well as a digital mode and there are some things called waveforms that you can use um, on this radio, which I haven't tested on the 8600 yet, but uh, one allows for D-Star and one for uh, some digital audio modes. And as it mentions here, uh, the radio does have uh, integrated GNSS receiver, and essentially this will help with frequency stability, which is even more important if you're using transverters and so on. It basically stops the frequency from possibly drifting as well as keeping it on the exact uh, frequency. So pretty much what you see frequency-wise is w where you're at. So uh, essentially accuracy is what I'm talking about. And the dimensions are here. Uh, now here's the back. The back features something that some of you may not have seen, which is essentially a GPS antenna input uh, or GNSS if you will and uh, once you connect the included antenna although I had to use my external antenna you will see the following screen on smart SDR where it says GNSS is installed which it will show regardless 
but if you're not getting any signals, it will say satellites visible or set visible zero, and mine is working pretty well. Um, right now, as I'm recording this, I see 19 satellites, seven are tracked, which is more than enough to um, get, um, get the unit calibrated. Also, those who get the M version will have an HDMI out. The uh, port that you see above um, here where the arrow is, I believe is only used on the uh, commercial or military receivers or transceivers that Flex Radio makes. And you probably noticed that I blacked out my serial number, just in case. The power connector is an Anderson power pole. And this is the same as it was on the 6600 series and the 6400 and so on. There's also Ethernet and two USB connectors. The Ethernet cable is obviously required uh, to operate the unit. And the USB cable could be used to control things such as a transverter or to plug in the uh, D-Star dongle, uh, which is an option, as well as some other things you can do. Uh, mostly has to do with band switching controls and such. Uh, you may not be using the USB ports at all, um, but the Ethernet cable, you definitely want to be uh, ready to have a switch uh, where you can plug it into uh, to interconnect with your PC and other uh, equipment. Here is the information from the Flex Radio website. This is the Flex 8600 Signature Series transceiver. Uh, it does cost a pretty penny, but I think it's actually well worth it. Uh, as you can see, uh, currently it's retailing for close to $5,000. They do trade-ins, which is something that you definitely uh, want to do. And, and if you have a radio that you want to get rid of. However, it does not have to be a flex radio is my understanding. Uh, but uh, do, do double check with them. Since we are talking about DX, uh, uh, those who don't know, there is a book I've written a couple years ago, Ham Radio DX, A Complete Guide. And it is available from DX Engineering as well as on Amazon. I have the links below. And if you're interested in learning more about DX or just uh, get a refresher, uh, get your copy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, it's Lucas W6AR.